farm here that we're located at, it was homesteaded by my great-grandfather in 1874. It's been in the family for almost 150 years. This is the place I grew up at, so we uh, have a long history here of, uh, of the Flickners and on this particular tract of land. You know, farming is a journey in my opinion. And my intent, and my wife's intent always has been is that to take the, the resource, the gift that the Lord's given us and try to make it a better piece, a better property than what we found it. It's been a, a lifelong legacy of conservation and, and truly kind of instilling from day one. Let's leave the, the ground, let's leave the farm, let's leave the business, the operation better than we found it, better than we inherited, better than we purchased it at. Good stewardship of our natural resources, our creation has been a, a lifelong learning process. I've always considered it to be a, a partnership in our marriage, working together, setting goals. We've talked a lot about projects and you know, what should we do, and we tried to educate our children about the importance of a good work ethic and a good stewardship of the land. Farming situations have changed over the years. We now have much more advanced technology that allows us to get away from the plow and do some things much more environmentally friendly. So as things change, as technology evolves, we're trying to move along with that, and that's part of the, the journey as to what we're trying to do here at the farm. Profitability is a key component of running any business, farm or other, but also the desire and the need to leave the farm in a better state than what we found it. If we erode the soil, future generations are going to be limited as what they can do. Dad made the decision when he started purchasing the operation to really focus on the irrigation and, and the row crop side and installed the first subsurface drip back in 2001. So I'm very interested in continuing that legacy of innovation and, and really finding the niche and making sure that we're profitable, but also nimble enough that we can know what's ahead of us around that corner. So I think we've got to be really astute and, and really good stewards of, of the limited resources that we have and use those to the best of our ability so that this operation can be here, hopefully, in, in seven more generations. Well, in 1955, my uncle drilled the first irrigation well in the area. We had some portable sprinkler pipe that we moved. We had siphon tubes. We, we did it all. But some 20 years ago, we had to make some decisions as to how were we going to continue to, to do that because it's very labor intensive and became familiar with the subsurface drip system and made the decision that that was the best for this particular situation because of the topography, the way the farm laid out, and have since added another 400, 450 acres of the drip system. It's a much more efficient delivery system of the water since you're delivering water under the ground during the growing season. It allows me to do a lot of fertility. Uh, another advantage is when we end up in an August like we're having now, the top six inches becomes very dry where the water's being delivered 16, 18 inches down below. But when we do get a rainfall event, that dryness on the top surface captures the rainfall so we do not lose rain as you would if you had the surface wet with a, with a pivot arrangement. It's a very efficient way to, to use the moisture. In addition to the subsurface drip, I do have a full-size pivot that we have retrofitted and we actually have the opportunity that we can use the nozzles as a normal pivot, but we also have fitted it with the drip tape actually hanging off the pivot and that's how the water is applied as the pivot goes through the field. A cover crops are a program that's still a work in progress, I would say. It's highly dependent upon the moisture that Mother Nature gives us. I do not irrigate cover crops, I save that water for the cash crop. The thing that I have done in the last 10 years is incorporate wheat into the irrigation cropping rotation where we used to just do corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans, and I have incorporated wheat into that largely as a cover crop and also then provide some of the wheat suppression advantages that we see. You know, Ray is opened up uh, his farm uh, to others as well through the Flickner Innovation Farm. 
you know, he hosts many different groups out here so that they can learn along with him. Uh, I strongly believe in, in the need to, to educate the public and, and that's part of why we have the, the farm, what we're doing here. We do need to, to be involved in activities. A lot of my activities have been water related. And my desire to, to conserve that natural resource. That was the concept, you know, how do we broaden that out so other folks can maybe take some of the things that we're doing and use them on their operation to improve it as well. It's very obvious the passion that Ray has to learn and the willingness for him to try new and innovative ideas as a part of the learning process. Earlier at our buried, I recognized the innovator that Ray was and his appreciation for the environment. I always have felt like you lead by example, but also some things are better caught than taught. It's always a humbling experience to be acknowledged by those professionals in the area of the work that, that we've done. Ray and his family, they certainly exemplify what the Leopold Conservation Award is about through their innovation, their ideas, and their desire to conserve. We look forward to working with Ray and his family as, as they continue their journey. You know, I think it's, uh, it's about the next generation and their understanding and what they may carry on with the legacy that we hope to leave. We don't do it for the recognition, but it is always rewarding and humbling to, to be recognized for what you have done. We are humbled and, and pleased to be honored with this uh, recognition. It's uh, just, it, it's, you know, does something to me by heart.